Hello, welcome to Driver Suit Blog Radio. I am Dave's replacement host, announcer Bot 5000. For episode 29, a special episode, we will cover the worst draft slash rookie seasons in pro sports history. So here are my picks for the worst draft slash rookie seasons in pro sports history. MLB 1983 When the first 18 picks of a draft earn 18 spots on an ESPN Top 100 Worst Draft Picks of All Time list, that tells you everything you need to know about this draft. 1. Tim Belcher Minnesota Twins 2. Kurt Stillwell Cincinnati Reds 3. Jeff Kunkel Texas Rangers 4. Eddie Williams New York Mets 5. Stan Hilton Oakland Athletics 6. Jackie Davidson Chicago Cubs 7. Daryl Akerfeld Seattle Mariners 8. Robbie Wine Houston Astros 9. Matt Stark Toronto Blue Jays 10. Ray Hayward San Diego Padres 11. Dave Clark Cleveland Indians 12. Ron DeLucci Pittsburgh Pirates 13. Joel Davis Chicago White Sox 14. Rich Stahl Montreal Expos 15. Wayne Dotson Detroit Tigers 16. Brian Holman Montreal Expos 17. Terry Bell Seattle Mariners 18. Eric Sonberg Los Angeles Dodgers Even Roger Clemens couldn't save it NFL 2005 Ronnie Brown, Cedric Benson, Braylon Edwards, Adam Pacman Jones, Jason Campbell Marcus Spears, Roddy White, Heath Miller, Logan Matkins, and that's just the first rounders. This whole draft was an ode to mediocrity, nothing really worth bragging about, unless you are a Packers fan, the 24th pick, made by the Green Bay Packers, was Aaron Rodgers, but he couldn't save the draft either. NHL 2000 Rick DiPietro, Danny Heatley, Marion Gaverick, Scott Hartnell, are the only major names in the first round. I won't cut DiPietro. Heatley, or Hartnell any slack for injuries, or suspensions for two reasons 1, this is hockey, and 2, in all three cases they were earned, especially Heatley, wrecking his Ferrari, which sidelined him, and killed a teammate. Though the 205th pick, Henrik Lundqvist was a decent move by the Rangers, but yet again, he couldn't save the draft. NBA 1986 First and foremost, Len Bias is not part of the discussion. In fact, his death would be one of the best things to happen to that draft, as it took the focus away from how awful it really was. If Bias was never a part of this, you have the number one pick, Brad Doherty, who by the way is more involved in NASCAR than he is in basketball, who is the only member of the first round to play in an all-star game. To top that off, Chris Washburn, Ron Tarpley, and William Bedford all had drug issues that hampered success in the NBA. The only other relevant player from the first round is Arvita Sabanis, who entered the Hall of Fame in 2005. I've never heard of him either. IndyCar 1980 Dennis Firestone, no relation, was the champ car rookie of the year, was impressive that year, but after that, his career took a nosedive, and that's me being polite. Of 41 attempts at races, he has 21 DNFs, did not finish, 6 DNQ, did not qualify, and 2 DNS, did not start, so he had 41 chances to succeed, but he pissed away 29 of them. Of the 12 he did complete, his highest finish was 5th, never had a pole or a fastest lap either. He's now running a trucking company. For the Indy 500 Rookie of the Year went to Tim Richmond, yes that Tim Richmond. Two races after winning the Rookie of the Year, he gets into a crash, and his mommy makes him leave Indy car racing, and he moves to NASCAR, and yes that is how it happened. NASCAR 1990 The whole ending to the season left a biter taste in the mouths of fans, a terrible penalty cost Mark Martin a Winston Cup title, he really deserves one, and the rookie class was bad, I mean really bad, I mean the winner of the rookie of the year had been dead for two months before winning the award. Yes a dead man won the rookie of the year honors, it happens, just ask Carlos Pardo. But even if he hadn't Jack Pennington, Jeff Purvis, and Jerry O'Neill, who between the four of them have no wins, no polls and one top ten. Well, that does it for this week, next week, we will discuss some news stories.